What's happening with interest rates? Is the market going to crash? How do you get the best mortgage terms and interest rates possible? If you can't get the mortgage you want from one lender, should you stop there? But first, you're listening to Chattel Fixtures PEI Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, David Cyrus McDonald, a realtor with Remax Charlottetown. If you want to stay in the know about real estate on PEI, then make sure you subscribe. Chattel Fixtures now has over 6,000 views and over 800 hours of watch time on YouTube, but still only 72 subscribers. If you want to hear more conversations like this, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you're listening on another podcast platform, please follow or subscribe there. If you want to take it up a notch, leave us a review or a comment. Let's get into this. Jason Ahern and Kieran Mulcahy are both mortgage specialists with RBC. Jason, born and raised in Summerside PEI, has worked with the company for 25 years, spending most of those years as branch manager in Summerside, working as a mortgage specialist since 2021. In addition to his work, he is into sports like hockey, football, and golf, He's married with two kids. Kieran was born in the UK and moved to Canada at age six and grew up in and around New Glasgow, Rustico, and Hunter River areas. He began working in financial services in 2006, focusing on insurance and investments. He started with RBC in 2010 when he began learning borrowing and credit applications. He has also been a mortgage specialist since 2021. Uh, so let's get into this. Uh, welcome, Jason and Karen. Appreciate you having us. We're pretty excited. Uh, you know, come, come, come up pretty quickly, but uh, yeah, uh, very excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, like I said, uh, you're catching us outside of bankers' hours, so hopefully my mind is dry enough to answer all your questions today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll do great. I'm sure you do great. I actually have kind of a funny question to start off with, and you can answer this however you want, um, and it may stretch outside of your RBC kind of realm. How can the average person get really rich? <laughs> well, I'm 25 years at RBC and I'm nowhere close to it. So I think well, you're probably asking the wrong guy to get it really rich. But I, I personally think that uh, um, small bit like it's the business owners that are doing extremely well. The, the people that have the courage to go out, open up their own business. And, you know, it's to, to go to a work every day and kind of punch the clock is one thing. But the people who can have no end are, are the, the self-employed people. That's my own partners of the thought. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I see a lot of successful people, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, kind of swinging for the fences, you know, going uh, going at it themselves, you know, putting in a lot of time and work and sweat equity uh, into growing their businesses, um, diversifying your investments, you know, mm -hmm. not just, uh, you know, stocks and invest, uh, you know, portfolio, you know, real estate, um, you know, outside, a uh, little a bit of everything, uh, mm -hmm. diversify. Your portfolio is going to build wealth. We're yeah. not, we're not going to take Kieran's stock tips today because I know whenever <laughs> we talk stock tips about our own personal stocks, um, we, we kind of differ quite a bit on our own oh, personal yeah? stocks. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And I've heard some of your views on yours, so I, you're, we're, I'm probably more aligned there. But uh, Kieran, he gets a little bit, he gets aggressive. He can be <laughs> oh, aggressive, really? So. You got strong opinions about which stocks to buy or which bonds. Like, uh, do you, so do you, uh, when you're putting your own portfolio together, uh, do you want to share any elements of what the mix is? You don't have to share. Uh, it's kind of personal, but no. Um, actually, right now I'm kind of sitting 33 cash, 33 stocks, and 33. We'll call it miscellaneous other. Miscellaneous <laughs> other. Oh, and that's word. I that's the word. I think that, I agree with the first 66 he has. It's that other other. Sometimes he'll get a little excited. I'm I'm really curious now. I want it now. I'm feeling like it's crypto or something like yeah. that. Crypto, gold, silver. You know. oh, oh, actually, throw real estate in there. I'm probably sixty, and then twenty, twenty, twenty. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That whole. Um, okay, here's my question about gold and silver. Since we're on this, yeah. um, so there's part of me that really likes the gold silver idea. I like the idea that I could have some kind of you know safe or safety deposit box or something where I can physically can touch, touch this thing. And I also think you know like given what's happened over the last few years, it's like, we don't really know what's going to happen out there. And then you have this tangible thing, but then I'm kind of picturing the reality of, okay, we're in this sort of post-apocalyptic situation. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you've got these hunks of metal. And I was just like, I don't know, like, are there going to be people that like, okay, I'm going to like melt this and like divide it up into like little bits that we can trade it. Like, or am I going to like the practicality of exchanging that, I find interesting. What do you, how, 
Do you have a picture of how that would play out if you own gold and silver? Yeah, um, I guess it comes back to the history of money. Um, I think, you know, 5,000 years ago, gold was always the, the standard, um, you know, medium of exchange. Yeah. Uh, it was only really the last, you know, 100 so years where we had um, a paper backed, you know, currency. Right. Um, it was normally backed by gold, but over the years, we've kind of, you know, sold our gold uh, reserves and. It's now basically a free fro floating fiat currency, mm -hmm. so it's not really backed by anything other than governments, you know, willing to take it for taxes and then just believe in it, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So over the years, you know, government's kind of been, you know, spending money and uh, mm -hmm. increasing the money supply, um, and uh, that's why we're seeing kind of inflation all over the place. Is there's imagine playing Monopoly and you know, the banker doubles your money every hour, right? Do you think right. Boardwalk would still be $400 if it was set by the market? Right. It would be, you know, $18,000 to buy Boardwalk to buy property. Boardwalk. Right, yeah. Right, and that's kind of what we're seeing now. Yeah, I guess like my question about the store of wealth in it is just like how to really dr like know the solid value of the gold, right? Like is it really in demand and that kind of thing in that situation? But yeah, that's an, that is an interesting point. And certainly when you have, and certainly, generally, historically, when there has been times of inflation, real estate has performed really well because, you know, there's yeah, more dollars going around. So the dollar's worth less. So and, and say also one of the things about inflation. So, I mean, if you're selling your house and it, it goes up a little bit in value um, well and you paid, say, cash for it, um, that that change in value, who knows, it may be a good amount, it may be a small amount. Um, but if you are, if you have a mortgage on it, then you have all this leverage associated with it. So say if there is inflation that happens and the value of your home goes up, uh, the value of your mortgage doesn't go up along with it. So you, that, that spread between it can increase and the value of that mortgage, uh, proportional to the value of the dollar, uh, decreases, um, along with you paying down that principal. So it is, it, I do generally see it as a good kind of inflation hedge. And I always want to talk generally with something like this because it's like, you know, there's individual, there's so it, many dynamics that go into value. hundred percent. And I think it's going to be, it goes down to that individual. Like there's in our, in our line of work, we, I think we talk about it quite a bit. There's people that if you have the ability to pay cash for our house versus you have that cash and what can I, what can I do with that cash? Can I make more than I'm going to pay on that mortgage rate? Right. right. So, yeah. And traditionally in the past couple of years, sure, please, I hope you were getting more than two or three percent on your money. Yeah. And we're getting it up there now. Now, if it, now if it's five, you know, am I, can I still make more than that? So some people don't have that view. Some people are like, that's a debt. I'm, I'm very concerned mm. I, to know that I have I, I owe, you know, a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage to someone versus having that cash in the in the bank. So I think you're going to have. Some individuals that will see the value of, you know what? No, thank you. I'm going to pay cash and I'm good for it. If they have that ability. Like, they have let's ability, go back yeah. to the preface of, the, of yeah. you have to have that ability. Mm -hmm. But to me, per, like I know my my own view would be, if, I mean, unless I know I'm not making more than that. If I'm not, if I'm only making 4% and I'm mm -hmm. paying five, the math just doesn't work. It's simple, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty simple. Yeah. I but, guess the, the higher the interest rate, the more motive there is to just pay it down because it's risk. Like if you... If you can pay it down and say if there are no penalties for that repayment, yeah. say if there's an amount that's allocated within that year that you're allowed to pay down or, or say right. when you're paying the down payment when you're first setting up the mortgage or whatever it is, um, that, uh, that amount that you pay down, you're then guaranteed to not pay that interest versus the profit that you could make by having that capital invested in other means is, uh, is less of a sure thing. Now, if you have some kind of risk-free rate, outside of that but those some of those like supposed risk free rates have been a little dodgy over the years like the stable coins and things like that or the the uh the crypto places that have been then guaranteeing a certain rate of return and then all of a sudden all your money disappears Absolutely. as we saw with a few of those no guys. question i'm, I'm yeah. just going more traditional even take a take an aggressive like a, not even aggressive a probably middle of the road aggressive mutual fund mm -hmm. that you're thinking I'm, I, w I should have a I should really have an eight to eleven percent return on that that mm -hmm. you're hoping for, right? That I mean, you're 
you're going to be some disappointed if you, if you do, if you did it that way. And all of a sudden you had the year that it was minus three, yep. but that's going to be, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, yeah, exactly. So that's generally been my take on it too. Like I've yeah. always been pro having, you know, especially in this lower interest rate. And I mean, historically we're still in a relatively low interest rate. It's kind of like more of a normal interest rate environment right now versus the, uh, uh, you know, if you say, you know, average out the last 40 years or something like that. Um, I mean, when you're in the eighties and people have stories of, you know, getting 15, 18, almost 20% yeah. mortgage rates, so it's like just such a different animal than we're in right now. Yeah. What kind of interest rates, and I'm not sure if you can share this or not, but what kind of interest rates have you seen go out lately for say, like a five year fixed or a variable? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, we had the high raising rate environment in 2022 and, and yeah. the start of 2023. Uh, Bank of Canada kind of stayed firm uh, the month of March, so we're gonna wait and see where they're going uh, the month of April. Um, uh, yeah. Variable rates, you know, went up and they're still priced pretty high. We haven't seen a whole lot of variable rate mortgages come through our. What's the difference between the variable and the fixed right now? Is there much? Uh, it's quite Extremely a spread. Extremely different, yeah. yeah. And, and and I mean this, and then again, this is going to be a stat that I guarantee it's not going to be right. But if you go if you go historically. Historically speaking, variable rate mortgages usually pay off better, like in the long run, than fixed. However, mm. we're, the the environment we're in right now, you're definitely not in that good good environment for a variable rate mortgage, right? So, um, it's based off our off prime. So you're looking at you're paying high fives in a variable rate right now, and in fact, probably low sixes because you know depending on if you had a variable rate mortgage, you get a discount off prime, right? Okay. So that's how we price it with us. And I mean, some of the other institutions can't speak for them, but so if you had a percent off prime, you're still paying 5.7, but today we're only given 20 points off prime. So you're oh, five point okay. or you're six and a half today. Oh, what about for a five year fix right now? Uh, they touched down a little bit. Five, it's, two, five. Uh, five, two, five. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, they came down a touch uh, around the Bank of Canada announcement yeah. uh, for the fixed rates. Yeah, we were up to five seven or five six nine. So right. it's, it's we've had a, a couple of breaks, which is nice because didn't yeah. really think that was going to happen. Because um, like, mortgage fixed rate, fixed rates are kind of more tied to bonds and bond returns, mm -hmm. and thankfully we have a cup a little bit of a I won't say good news on the bonds lately, but. Uh, Right. Yeah. yeah. That's how it, where variable rates strictly tied to uh, the overnight lending rate. Right. Oh, OK. And so when you're uh, this may be I'm not sure. If, uh, my I don't really like. OK, if you are loaning uh, for a fixed uh, rate and it's going do you then does then RBC sell that off to the bond market or to sell that off to somebody else or do they carry that or is that outside of your kind of realm? Probably a little bit side of my, I mean, whatever, once basically when we take that term, it's locked in and tied to that bond market for the duration of that term. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I've seen a lot more people kind of looking at the shorter terms lately too, just because of this high environment. Um, yeah. A lot of people are kind of speculating it may not be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, um, I've, I've seen a lot of three-year fixed lately. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, as opposed to the traditional five-year that most people go with. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I'm seeing lately. Okay, a the, lot of three-year. And then, so any four or five, or is, you, is with you guys normally go from three-year to five-year? No, we all, we do one, two, three, four, five, uh, seven, ten. Um, Please, like I was in my 25 years, I've seen one person go into a 10 year mortgage and that poor person, I'm, I remember they were saying, it's fine. We have zero plans. Like you can never say zero plans. You can't. You, who knows what happens down the future? Life changes, family changes, mm. life events, you know, unfortunately, timely deaths. So whenever that that poor that person had to make the uh, to get out of that, the penalty was just unfortunate. Like it was just, you know, it's big it was too much. It was yeah because. Right. The penalty is based on interest rate differential, so mm. uh, it, it really depends on what the rates are at the time and whether it's a, a kind of a low rate environment or a high. So, you know, ideally, to Kieran's point, we're, a lot of what we're doing right now is three-year terms, and it's more so people thinking, well, maybe you know, um, you know, we don't know if there's a, is there another war coming? Do we have another pandemic coming? Do we what do we have coming that was gonna, that'll drive those rates? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you know, are we? You know, and if I had those 
goggles on, like I said, that you get that first question you asked about, uh, you know, how do I become get rich? Or not I would, me, just I would, like somebody. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely crystal ball. Yeah, crystal here ball, it is. Yeah. I don't have that. I'm, I've been looking for it, and but we don't seem to have it. As, you know, all the different branches I've been in, I still haven't seen that crystal ball, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that I guess that's that happy medium right now. We're we're seeing to be a lot of folks going in that three year term. Yeah, just hoping that you know you know some things maybe the dust has settled a bit. But mm -hmm. yeah, it does seem like even over the last say I don't know three months, uh, it does feel like a little bit of the fear around interest rates going crazy has calmed a little bit. Yeah. Um, it last year with the kind of rapid change. I mean, starting the year out. Uh, still ultra low interest rates and then through the spring on through the summer and all through the fall is this kind of like steady march upward uh and at, at a pace that's really unusual and it spooked a lot of people um um yeah i have gut feelings around it i kind of feel like we are going to stabilize a little bit kind of around this rate for the next little while and then uh and then i kind of feel like it'll tip back a bit but it's anybody's guess i mean i mean both of us, I, I can't speak for you, Kieran, but I know that I, I do a, a tremendous amount of like reading on people's opinion because it's, it's really it's opinions. Yeah, of <laughs> yeah, course. Like, opinions you're gonna, yeah, yeah, you're gonna see someone that really says like, and you know, they're like, "This is really what's like." No, I didn't see a lot of people get that right. By the way, that that we were going to increase, you know, that yeah. much mm -hmm. in that short of time. So, mm -hmm. you know, some people thought, you know, it was going to go hot, it was going to go quick, but maybe nothing like to your point. That's unprecedented. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, I'll see contrast in reports all the time. So mm -hmm. to your point, I have my own gut feeling. I, I feel like we'll eventually fall back into the low fours, high threes. Yeah. But I also know that from everything I read, we like the, the days of the 1.7s and 8s are should be gone. Yeah. You know, the Bank of Canada doesn't really think that that's a good place for it at anyone. Yeah, unless, you know? there's, um, yeah. unless there's some kind of real serious issue that right. that causes yeah that. we need to uh, do you know, do we need to get back to the point where we need to encourage spending that much again to the point right I don't yeah know. exactly that doesn't seem to be i mean even uh yeah there was a long time where it felt like interest rates like inflation's kind of going and interest rates not really going and then all of a sudden it was like ooh, i think we've made a terrible mistake <laughs> and then it's like well, <laughs> yeah um, absolutely kind of a wild ride and, for everybody to go and on and early in uh, i guess mid 2022 we we were seeing like 0.5, 0 0.75 increases by the yeah. Bank of Canada. So they kind of slowed down. I mean, they were still increasing it. Imagine it's like a car. You're still accelerating going forward. You're just slowing down, right? Mm -hmm. You're still going forward. You're just slowing down. You're not and, accelerating and, as fast. And right? to your point, like the fear, I also felt that that fear was going, but with the Fed moving last week again, or was it last, whatever it was, or they went 0.25, it was, I think it was last week. And no, that? they stayed for No, no, not Canada, U.S. Oh, U.S., yeah. So yeah, that... Yeah. What, does that does that make us say, "Who maybe, maybe we should go a little one more"? Like, you know, mm. that's the interesting point where I was thinking, I was hoping the U.S. was actually get to their point too, right? Mm. But um, and it normally takes, I think, like eighteen months to two years for the flow of money to actually go through the whole system. Oh yeah, like I mean, um, even if you look at like the terms of these mortgages that we're talking about, some people won't be affected by these interest rates for years. Exactly, yeah. like whenever it was the you know one seven nines and the one point eight percent mortgages. Um, and you know, Canada throwing out money, like it took all that money. You saw asset prices increase, you know, real estate stocks. Um, then that money kind of flows into goods and services. That's why, you know, that's why we're seeing inflation in 2022, mm. uh, 2023. And then unfortunately, lastly, it kind of hits wages. Yeah. Um, so the changes that they're making now, we're really only going to see kind of in the next year to year and a half, I think. Right. Yeah. There is. There's definitely a la like latency around it, and the markets mm -hmm. try to guess early. So mm -hmm. you'll see stock the stock market react to these things just instantly. Like you can watch Jerome Powell talking, and watch say the Nasdaq on the screen right beside him, and just he'll be like, "We're really worried about inflation. Everything goes down." And he'll say, <laughs> "He'll say, but we see things bouncing and everything goes up." It's literally tied to those words absolutely directly. Yeah and instantaneously and it is almost shocking to watch the level of uh level of control that central banks have on asset values mm. um among other things it's really interesting okay moving on do you do loans for uh for multi-million dollar homes on pei like do you ever do like multi-million dollar mortgages 
I, it's, I had a conversation with a construction person the other day and like, he, he, he like, there's definitely some in the, it's funny, two years ago, you wouldn't see very many on MLS over a mill. Yeah. Right. And now there's, there's all kinds, right? There's, you know, so we definitely do the, the lending on that. It's a little different. We tier it. Yeah. It's tiered. And, uh, traditionally people are buying that size of real estate. They're generally coming up with a decent size down payment. So the mortgage amount wouldn't be the mill, right? Can you, can you insure that with like CMHC? Like, can you insure like a, say a $5 million mortgage? Could CMHC insure that? 5% get a 5% down. down? <laughs> be nice. We, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, wouldn't we all enjoy that? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yes, I guess is the, the answer is yes. Um, and that's more common. I mean, it's funny that cause in, in Atlanta, Canada, you know, we're fun. We just seeing this now, you know, that's been going on, you know, Oh, in Vancouver, like a million, BC, two million. That's just that's that's just know, the run of the mill five hundred square foot condo. Home, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, maybe I'm like not exactly sure, but yeah, yeah, it that really is. Yeah. So, it absolutely, is yeah. We you know, um, hundred percent, we do that. So yeah, if it's possible, I mean, it, it's it's all based on the income to support the debt load, right? Yeah, like we're, yeah. We're, you'd have to have some pretty serious income though. Oh, that, absolutely, that. yeah, because yeah. it's all best based on your debt ratio, right? So we have to show Cash the income to support, them. right? Like yeah. we're you know lending out millions of dollars on promises to pay back. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But the same rules would apply, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It'd be yeah. tiered and they'd probably be bigger down payment. Down payment would be but... tiered up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. The only difference, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. So make sure, I want to make sure I have this straight. So when people are going to get a loan, uh, banks typically looking at their income and debt to come up with debt service ratios, gross debt service and your total debt service. Correct. Credit rating, uh, net worth. Um, and appraisal of the asset. Are there any other big ones that I'm missing? Those are the big. Pretty guys. much it. There'd be kind of an undisclosed character, um, like what's your purpose of the purchase or this property, okay. um, and their character on you know uh, how they got that sizable net worth, um, right. as well as yeah. accumulation of the the assets and uh, um, their character on like their repayment plans and strategy and mm. how they managed the debt before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. But I mean, it's funny, like, and, and it's really, it's, it sounds like we can say, you know, those are just the quick, quick little things, but it's, it's so not cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's really sounds like it to the, you know, to somebody who's not in the industry, but you, you're going to have so many situations where, um, you know, and, and maybe, it, maybe it gets to the part where if there's a, if there's a weakness on one of those, we bring in a co-signer opportunity or you bring mm -hmm. in something like that too, right? Right. How common is a co-signer? Quite. In, especially in PEI. Um, yeah. It, the first time home buyers, it's, it's extremely difficult now in PEI. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they're going to make their incomes like uh, you know maybe if you're at that starting point when you're early twenties and um, you know I'm just going to date myself and say back when this is 25 years guy, you know whenever we're going to get back in, it was you know you're going to get into a you know a starter home at eighty thousand dollars and that starter home today seems to be more in that three hundred thousand dollar range, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes co-signers are a little bit more. Um, common here than they have been in the past right you know? yeah but it's still a doable thing for Absolutely. people provided they have somebody who has the the uh the capacity the, the capacity yeah yeah the income the willing. capacity the debt uh, yeah. yeah we're seeing a lot of um struggles with first-time home buyers lately just uh, either needing stronger co-signers or gifted or you know uh, assets you know larger mm -hmm. down payments to kind of make it work Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing more success lately on the next home buyers, absolutely, yeah. because they're selling their home for three, four hundred thousand. Uh, that's coming to pay off, you know, one hundred fifty thousand mortgage. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have a bit of cash to pay off, you know, thirty, fifty thousand of loans and credit card debts to to help that debt ratio. Mm -hmm. And then here they're coming with a you know a large hundred thousand down payment towards their next property with their mm -hmm. income freed up to qualify for. You know, a four hundred thousand mortgage. Yeah, and maybe by this point in their career, their earnings are up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I mean, if you look at the you know from the finance, that's the, the kind of the wealth corridor. That you, you're going to start building your wealth in your second and third home, and you're getting your in your probably late thirties and early forties is when kids are older. Like you know, like, you don't have many expenses. Your kids are a lot younger than mine. <laughs> Both of my, my I'm an empty nester now, so all of a sudden you're like, hey, I got a little extra money today that I normally would have right from. Mm -hmm. You know all the different going to the rinks and ballparks and grocery store and everything so um you know it just that's just the natural flow of of, of how that would work so um but yeah it, i i that's the one i guess piece of that that explosion of the market that really it, it, i feel like it, 
especially here in PEI in Atlanta, Canada. But I mean, it's really for all Canadians. I mean, you know, is the first time home buyer seems to be set back more than they were, mm-hmm. you know, just, a, you know, four or five years ago. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you look at it, at when I was getting first getting in the market in 2010 versus, um, uh, after things started to really take off around 2015, 2016, and then, you know, during you know, 2020, 2021, it was a whole other ball game. In terms Absolutely. Of the, the rate of, um, of the, the, the price of houses went up. Yeah. yeah. And the price is also kind of dictated on the borrowing power, right? Because mm-hmm. back, uh, you know, uh, in the 80s, you know, the $80,000 home with, you know, 10% interest rates, well, wages were lower, right? So with higher interest rates, their payment dictated that purchase price of the home, yeah. right? So now we've seen wages go up a little bit, not much. Uh, we've seen the prices shoot up a lot, mm-hmm. right? But now with this current higher interest rate environment, it's you know it's making it a bit more difficult. They're not meeting like the income can't support a traditional price as if they were back when it was you know 2021 when it was one or two percent. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Do you have many people that get pre-approved at a certain amount um, who then? Uh, it falls apart um, when they go and say that they, most people are able to do condition of financing now, but there's the, that's the impression I have anyway, but um, where it falls apart after their pre-approval um, and what are the typical reasons why, uh, why it would fall apart? Well, I guess for, for us, we will have uh, um, like, I guess the difference between pre-approval and, and firm approval, but for our pre-approvals, we're still going to verify income at that point. Okay. We actually, so whenever we'll complete a pre-approval, we're going to verify income. Um, we're going to verify down payment. We're going to pull a credit bureau. So we're going to be pretty good idea that the affordability of the, of the, the affordability is there. There's something with the home that didn't go through. I, oh, so, so like the appraisal, for example, this could be the, pra- the foundation of like, like, so maybe, it, you know, sometimes even on our appraisal side, it's not even so much the property inspection, but the, the, the lend will come back and the appraisal will say, there's a found member problem with the foundation or a problem with a, so it's there'd be some of that that may you know that, that may pull it back um yeah the lender might like the borrower themselves like the income the credit and the right. payment but maybe we the house fell like like, like the, the roof that specific in, home. You know, that specific home isn't good right yeah. and what if, about location location it in pe yeah, for, we're good we have no like we do a lot of, we do a lot of rural we do it all um you know, because there's some lenders that definitely don't like it won't have it's definitely uh, we're talking today it was a couple of them that's population based mm-hmm. though you know i'm not sure which lenders they are but it's five thousand or above or you know so you if you want to buy in a in a rural community they would be like they wouldn't do it where we'll we'll do it 100 percent. there's nowhere uh, we won't be able to to well, i shouldn't say that but like provided, Don't worry, I'm aware of. Yeah, yeah, I'm a born raiser. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and all that stuff. You know, yeah, the only yeah. one thing that would take. A, 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 so if I've said you're pre-approved for a certain amount, the one thing that comes to mind with me is if if they change gears and went to a condo, and there was a condo fee that we didn't have taken. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So maybe there was a two like two hundred fifty or three hundred fifty dollar condo fee that we didn't account for in mm. the pre-approval. Right. That, yeah. That would that would shift it. Right. So mm. the one thing and. Again, uh, th- um, if, if we're talking investments, I'm extremely aggressive. <laughs> but the banker, the 25 year banker in me, we would always tell someone like, you know, and when they're working with a realtor like yourself, they're going to say, "Please make sure you have a finance condition, even though we know you're pre-approved, mm-hmm. because there's just still things that can fall apart, right? Yeah. yeah. There's 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 so many variables that you know, and and did we you know did by the time we ver- we've looked at documentation. You know, has time gone by? Are you not full time anymore? Maybe you lost that. There's, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. something could happen. Yeah, maybe Rates you took are, on a car loan or something. Right. Exactly. So we'd have to maybe update a credit bureau if it's enough times passed. Uh, rates are committed for a certain amount of time, 120 mm-hmm. days. So, yeah. um, you know, if we have to reset a rate and the rate's higher now, then it squeezes out uh, mm-hmm. a bit of borrowing power. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, yeah. 100%. So this is all those little, that's why, I, and I know that we, we got into a competitive environment. It, like from a buy-in perspective that, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a realtor, I'd be like, let's not put conditions on this. Let's make sure that let's be aggressive. Let's get our offer done because there's so many people on this house, right? We need to know we're, that we're going to come in. Um, and that was a time it was real. And we, I, I, it happened all the time it, and we were making, making it work, but 
the this that the inside of me would always say because <laughs> like, yeah. just i mean yeah. you know what you know, they're under con contract yeah. to get it yeah uh, at that point so that's right so. um and if the financing falls through that can mean trouble yeah, yeah it's yeah. just you know i just want i just want to always make sure that we're trying to make sure we're protecting our customers our clients mm -hmm. right just you know, doing our best to make sure we're trying to give them the right advice, even though there should be no reason. How much time uh, do you normally need for financing? Yeah, assuming they have a pre-approval. I mean, it's industry standards ten, but lately like business it's days? business days. Yeah, but it's we can get through them pretty quick lately. Like, yeah. <laughs> I give I give you an example. I had one just it was the one we had last week. He was not doesn't even an RBC client got declined at his existing lender. He called me up at four o'clock on a. On a I, I, whatever Wednesday, and I said, "Send me this, this, and this." And I did the, I did it, sent it in that night. And by three o'clock the next day, we had him firm approved. It was done. Oh, there was wow. no pre-approval, no not like. So mm -hmm. there can be times it's quick, mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's also going to be times where, um, you know, was and that that's, simple case in terms of their income. They had it was consistent. it was uh, it was a situation where it, it, you know the kind of goes back to it was a uh, it was a mini home and. Um, some of the other banks don't finance many homes versus, you know, we have, yeah. a, we, we do a lot of them. So, um, yeah. And, you know, normally an appraisal is going to be required. So whenever we're doing, if we go from a pre-approval to an approval, we're going to order it, yeah, an appraisal. And so there's sometimes that there, you know, the appraisal will just say, yeah, the valuation's good. We have so much data, like this big data they'd have. And, you know, that house has been sold 10 times. We know the market capability here. So, and so the, the valuation's fine. So they don't need to send out an appraiser. Right. Mm -hmm. So there would be Jason, yeah, well, you know, the, the, there's a system that would get that done. And, but, you know, I'd say more often than not, we're getting appraisals. So we had that kind of ties us up. We can't do anything until the appraisals back. Mm -hmm. too. So, yeah. Also, the market environment is a little different than it was a year or two sure ago, is. right? So the volume is down. There's less listings available. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think our credit adjudicators are um have more capacity to kind of take look at files yeah. a little faster than they did you know two years ago when there was you know purchases but, going but, all over the place but the market okay. standard we'd say we'd have an approval back like we'll always try to get you within a few like probably four days is that yeah we'll say four but we provided won't. they're they're giving you everything you need right. as you ask for it exactly, exactly. I mean, every that's client's different too yeah it's the mm -hmm. other piece like uh some clients are quick they'll get to, to you within 20 minutes yeah, they and already have everything it up. everything ready to send it like, in, emails sent. sometimes you're get, trying to get documents from a client like a month later you know what I mean? right yeah. <laughs> yeah. also down on the client to be prepared and have their due diligence uh, what about people who don't have traditional income so say entrepreneurs or or people whose income is yeah, more spotty. Maybe it's reasonably stable. Um, say, you know, one year they're making, you know, forty five thousand, another year they're making sixty five, another year they're making fifty, but it's from different entrepreneurial sources and it's not from just a paycheck. Like, how do you manage those situations? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, industry standard, and this would be likely across all lenders, we're looking at a two year average when it's variable income. So self-employed contract employees uh, hourly who picks up overtime and bonuses mm -hmm. we're traditionally looking at a two-year average uh, there are some kind of special lending programs that we can kind of get into where we're looking at kind of the strength of the business to help you know inflate the personal a little bit little bit like saying that the person could take more out of the business if they wanted to you know right maybe for a tax standpoint there they're taking a smaller pay cut personally keeping more in the business so we can kind of Look at different ways to, you know, yeah. bring the strength of the business. It's really, oh, okay. it, it really makes one of those. It, it's trying to make sure we're always trying to think outside the box, present the best cases we can. But, um, yeah, it can be. It, there, there's situations where you, you you can make it work for that. Um, um, and then there's some, unfortunately, just they just don't kind of fit the. It's the square peg round hole thing, right? But yeah, and I mean, one of the common questions I, one of the common frustrations I've heard from people who maybe don't have the capacity to get a mortgage is say, you know, they're paying $1,500 a month in rent, uh, yeah. but they can't get a mortgage for $1,200. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm sure you get, that's a common sort of, uh, uh, you know, it's common plight we'll say. Yeah. What do you say to, what do you say to those people? It happens a lot. I, I get that comment a lot. I mean, I get at the end of the day, um, like I completely get that as a as a person, just you know, you know, you're going, yeah, I, the, the common sense piece. But you know, there's, there's so many, there's so many different, like I guess, ways that you need to meet a certain criteria. So the, the, there has to be a line drawn somewhere. 
Yeah. Right. And in order for the, you know, the bank to protect their shareholders, there's got to be policies and procedures. And I guess that would be the best way to say, um, you know, it's probably, you know, how, wh where, where is that line drawn? Um, you know, and it's pretty arbitrary. Like it's like, it is not like uh, based on, you know, because you can have a wonderful person who's been paying it, you know, paying their rent diligently. Mm -hmm. And, but, um, but unfortunately they're, earnings are not big enough for it to work with the debt service ratio or the, uh, um, or the, they have debt that is so much other debt that is blocking their ability to get that debt service ratio, um, working right. So debt service ratio for the audience, uh, maybe I'll say, it and you, you correct me if I have it wrong. It's basically what percentage of your income is going into paying your debt payment. Right. Yeah. Uh, so standard industry is uh, about 40%. Sometimes on a good, strong application, we can stretch it out to 44%. That would be for total debt service, right? Total yeah. debt service. Yeah. So that's yeah. like including your other loans and right. stuff. One so, gross yeah. dollar of income, you're capping it at 40 cents or 45 cents. Just pay, yeah. that's what it is. So yeah. Gross so dollar. say if you make, yeah. Say if you make just for easy math, we'll say if someone makes the couple, say if a couple makes a hundred thousand dollars a year, then they could have total debt payments of around 40 to $44,000 a year. That sounds about right. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. kind of yeah. how it works, right? Exactly. But coming back to your point on the renter versus the, um, the borrower, right? Yeah. The mortgage applicant, uh, as a lender, um, you know, we're more, uh, interested in, you know, that this person is, has the ability to pay back the loan. Right. Yeah. So, and mm -hmm. then we have collateral of the home, right. And yeah. we, that, and the home has to be a marketable security that if they did default and we, unfortunately have to take it from them mm -hmm. you know we we can resale it to recoup the losses right so yeah, as exactly. a renter even though you know they we see their bank statements and they're paying 1500 a month um if they default on the rent payment that's not you know a bank's problem you know what i mean that yeah. would be the landlord's problem yeah exactly so it's it's a complicated thing and, and it, it is, doesn't report anywhere too and, and that's the the biggest i'd say it's the reporting piece that would it's be not nice a credit because that exactly because right? then at least you'd be getting uh yeah and kind of a business credit. case to say like, hey, they can afford fifteen hundred a month and for years and years. We'd yeah, never exactly. ever ever say that someone's going to have a debt. But how would you? How are you showing me that? So you're showing it like, is that a what document are you providing to show that? Right? Like, is that a lease agreement between you and your landlord with a letter? I don't know. Like that, it can be. It can be. You got to be. You know, um, got to kind of. There's got to. That's where that kind of that line gets into. Where where can it can be? How do you document it? How can you show it? And, yeah. It is a tricky thing. Uh, it's very, I mean, and there's no, there's no question, you know, that depends. And you know, um, how, you know, there's, there's times where you know that you could like, I'm sure that this person's going to be able to pay that back, but it just, you know, the, the, the numbers, the numbers, yeah. numbers don't work. Yeah. And it, it's like also, yeah, awesome. it is one of those sad things though, in a way, Absolutely. like, like yeah. I totally, I feel like I totally understand why it is this way. And it's, and it's a tough nut to crack to think how you could do a better job, how it could be done like more fairly, but it is so like one of those things where the rich get rich and the poor, you know, like in a way, like yeah. it's like if assuming that buying a house is a path to richness, which is like, you know, debatable in certain ways, but often has been, you know, at least people are paying down their principal if they're living in their own house. And yeah. historically house values have gone up um, over time. Um, you know, as a yeah. homeowner, you also have, you know, property taxes, heat, you know, utilities, repairs, uh, you know, repairs of the yeah, home where as a tenant, you yeah. you know, it's a landlord's, you know, responsibility. So yeah. there's kind of that extra risk that's not associated with the, the tenants. Yeah. yeah. What do you say? Like, um, maybe this, this is, I feel like goes into a whole other realm, kind of like the, how do you, the first question I had, but like, <laughs> what do you, what do you say? What, what do you, like, I don't really know what to say. I mean, if someone tells me that, um, I, you know, I guess it's, you can't really just go in and just like tell people how to lead their lives and what to do, but it can be tough. Like, I think especially the case now, not to like, like be too much of a Debbie Downer or whatever, but if you're in a situation, like I remember there was this one job I worked where people would work long hours and often they'd have kids and then they'd be up late with the kids and then up early for work and, mm -hmm. and just that, and maybe that job, just the pay, wasn't enough to really get them ahead and they have expenses and then they're building up debt just to get by. And then they don't really necessarily, they're tired, right? They don't necessarily have that like 
time to like be like, I'm going to learn how to code or I'm going to, you know, or like I'm going to learn some new marketable skill or whatever yeah. to supplement their income. And I, maybe they don't have family to lean on. It's like, this can really sometimes be just super tough and no question and unfair yeah. in a lot of ways. And I think like my temptation is to be like, oh, just like find some way of like people will say like, oh, you know, cancel your Netflix like subscription or whatever. But like, um, but like that journey, if you're like maxed out credit card, maxed out so line of credit. I, I guess what I would love to say to your point of where you're going, and maybe I'm, you tell me if I'm wrong. Personally, and this is my, goes back to the, I guess, longevity and career at RBC. And we, t we, we have, like, we'll, we'll be involved with the schools and do, um, never we'll get to speak at the schools. What's that program called? JA. Yeah, yeah. Right? So what I would love to see is why don't we have a, like, and this is going to be my little soapbox for the day. <laughs> But why don't we have why don't we have a course in school, especially in high school, where you teach people about credit? Like yeah. you know how. So what I see with you know the, the, the this this is my you know I wish and it just hurts me. People get a cell phone bill, they don't realize cell phone bills report to the credit bureau, right? So I'm 19, I'm 20 years old, you know, and you're if you're late by a couple of days, but you don't matter. But it, the impact that has to a credit score at such a young age, you're just you're just about that's such a huge percentage, right? Like, it's, you missed one payment, have, that might be your second payment. That's the second payment in history, your, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. So now yeah. I mean, and then well, if they, you know, and the other piece, and, and I'm I'm a PEI boy, born and raised, and 100 percent did it when I was young, which was a mistake. Is first thing I'm going to do as soon as I get a good paying job, I'm going to go get my truck. Right. And I'm going to get a nice one with a big payment. And then all of a sudden when it comes time that you're like, geez, I'd like to get a home. What there? And we talk about this debt ratio. Well, how come I may? Well, it's because Jason, you have a $900 truck payment. <laughs> you're yeah. all like, Oh, <laughs> right. Like, so, yeah. and you're, you know, are you, so if we could have those conversations and in right from, you know, when we're trying to educate people in grade 10 or 11 or 12, I think that would be, you know, and, and we could talk about all the fine. It doesn't get limited on, on credit or it doesn't get limited just on mortgages. Could, I don't know if you ever want to go down that investment path because that's a whole different ballgame. But um, just the, 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 the importance of, you know, if, if you're coming out of the gate to your point, you know, because now you're not trying to figure that out when you're 28 or 29 and you're working overtime and you got, you're overextended, mm. right? That, you know, the of how you can easily get overextended quick. Yeah. Right. That's, and you can imagine this for a lot of things in life too. Of, like, of course. Like and, and I had like a, I knew someone who, uh, who in old age, uh, I met someone who in old age had a surgery and was bedridden for a while. And then from the muscles not being used, she then had to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life because her muscles just stopped being used so much that they stopped working. Mm -hmm. um, and so even something like just the real value of exercise, right. the real value of being healthy, yeah. the real value of eating right. It's like, how, how could you optimize the educational experience that really sets you up for an amazing life? And yeah. that, that seems like... And I, again, I am actually like a trained educator. I'm certified like to teach in the public school system. And I think that teachers, I, I think teachers are doing great. Um, oh, that's, yeah, and, but, absolutely. Uh, but you can't imagine kind of optimize because I've heard this kind of like financial education type of suggestion before. And when I think more broadly about like, how do we set people up for life? It really can spur a lot of ideas. And, yeah, definitely. It's the curriculums in school, right? They, they should, uh, you know, try to include like credit, um, you know, understanding credit, how to manage credit, saving, you know, building, building savings. Um, also kind of coming back to, uh, you know, um, what you were saying before, where, you know, people have so much debt load and they, you know, pay rent on time, but they can't afford a mortgage. Well, mm. it's also partly the current environment, right? Like we're, we're seeing like record levels of individual debt, record levels of corporate debt, record levels of government debt, right? So there's so much debt in the system mm. that, you know, think of the Homer Simpsons of the world, you know, 20 years ago, a single family with a bunch of kids could afford a two story home, mm. right? Like now what you're needing, you know, two household, you know, two members of the family going to work full time to even just qualify to get a mortgage now, right? Mm. So it's just kind of the world has changed from the 70s, 80s, and on to today, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, 
Well, it's kind of hard to go back to these just questions about loans and stuff after that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry, it's a little <laughs> deep. Yeah. No, I, was, and I'm think, I, I want to know more. Like, lines of credit. I want to know what Homer's pension was at the <laughs> yeah, nuclear power exactly. plant. I mean, he had a really important job. Yeah, yeah. he was the nuclear yeah. yeah. power plant. No question. He had, yeah, he had a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was, man, that actually, that whole concept is really hilarious. Um, well, maybe this is one. Uh, what are some common misconceptions about how mortgages work? Is the, Are there common, like, like, do people come in with questions about just how mortgages work where you're like, I, I've, maybe when you're first entering this, you don't expect to have these questions. And then when you're in it, you know, there's certain questions that come up. A lot. Yeah, I, I can answer that one. Um, I see a lot of newcomers, uh, people coming from foreign countries. They come here with quite a bit of money. Uh, the, the, the Canadian government has, or PEI government has a, what's called a PMP program. So they're kind of opening up the doors to, you know, foreign people coming, um, with, you know, large sums of money or, you know, skills or education background that kind of would help contribute to our economy locally. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times uh, in my understanding of like China, they are, their bank system is kind of based on asset rich where we're more Canadian banking is more on cash flow, right? Like yeah. income to service the debt. So I find a lot of people that they come here with a lot of money. They maybe buy up some real estate because, you know, they can't, qualify for mortgage yet because they're just getting here getting established you know don't have the income to support a canadian traditional mortgage right? right um so a lot of misconceptions i think would be a lot of people think they can use the equity of their home um you know for for lending right so yes we can take a free and clear property and slap a you know mortgage or a secured line of credit against it but it's still that income piece to service that service debt. that debt the affordability of it yeah mm -hmm. so that's kind of one misconception i've kind of understood over the last mm. couple of years is a lot of people think, oh, I'm asset rich. I should be, be able to get it. Well, no, yeah. we still need to see how are you going to be able to service this debt long term. Right. Yeah. And what about, say, uh, if someone's uh, income is from, uh, uh, say, interest on, uh, uh, say, it's dividends and, um, and profit on stocks and that kind of thing. We, we can use two year average. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we'll, we'll use it. Yeah. It goes towards it, but um, like trading and things like that. Yeah. I mean, we'll use it's all eligible income that we could use. So anything yeah. that you could report to CRA as yeah. income. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, but From yeah, that, again, we'd be because back it, into that two year it goes, yeah. because it varies. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if the, the most recent year was lower than the one before, would you use the most recent year? Correct. Exactly. And yeah. then if the most recent year was higher than the other one, you'd average the two. Average the two. two. Yeah. yeah. Two year average or most recent year, whatever. Yeah. Whichever's worse. Yeah. 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 Lesser thereof. <laughs> yeah. 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 The lesser thereof. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Um, I mean, the easy one there though, I think you're to your point is yeah. Like, the, the common misperception is asset based lending versus cash flow. Like yeah. we're, we're cash flow lenders. Yeah. Right? Or not, not us. The, All resident, the, yeah, the yeah. residential mortgages are based yeah. on cash flow lending. It's, you know, you know, it's great that you have some other assets, 100%, um, but still need to be able to service the debt. Like, what's, how are we making the payments monthly? Like, that's what it comes down to. Because, so, yeah, yeah, people might have a lot of money, um, which can service the mortgage payments for, you know, five, 10 years. But if we're amortizing over 25, 30 years, well then, yeah. you know, what's the longevity of that? Yeah. And you still amortize over 30 years? 30 years. Yeah. yeah. 20, okay. uh, conventional mortgage over 20% down payment. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, uh, they won't insure it. Um, uh, for like CMHC won't insure over 25 years. That's Correct. right. Yeah. Default insurance 25 years. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Man, I have a few random questions here. I like the random ones. I think they're the most fun in a way. <laughs> but, uh, okay, banks seem to be able to loan an endless amount of money. Where does that money come from? And is it limited somehow? Well, that's that's whole that's balance sheet, right? And, and well, <laughs> and well, reserve you know, banking. Yeah. yeah, so, but I mean, yes, absolutely. We don't, you know, you're, we're going to be, we're, it's, uh, you know, this is where the, you know, we have some of the advantages, you know, RBC, for example, is the largest in Canada. So we have a lot of assets to be able to do that lending off. But there, uh, ultimately there's, you know, good thing it's not Kieran and I are going to, to hang on. Do we have that? Yeah. Check. We can give this out today. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, the, you know, up, the, up and above that's being done. And, you know, there's, there's definitely, 
Um, but that's asset based. That's not cash flow based, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so banks have special treatment. So no. So it's cash flow based to service the debt for so the to consumer. Service the debt. For the consumer. But we need right? the assets. Okay. But but then we we uh, so so the reason oh, our interest you can rates loan are dictated. Off your assets. Right. Yeah. Where does that money come from though? It's just this is banking though, right? Yeah. You just can't yeah. have a run on the bank. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of coming back to you know what's our money tied to, right? At the beginning of our conversation, how yeah. money was always fixed to gold, and we've kind of gone off a of gold standard now into yeah. the free flo floating fiat standard. Mm -hmm. um, that now you know there is f fractional reserve banking, so we do need to have some sort of asset base to cover um, you know our our debt balance. There's a certain amount of like days. Of like people withdrawing money that you have to be prepared for. The bank has to be this may be too big. Yeah, picture. it's well beyond us. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I would say yes is the answer, but uh, yeah, I, I could I, write a mortgage app, but yeah, I don't yeah, know. Okay. yeah that might be a that's one on sports. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but right, yeah, yeah. Dude, there's no question that I mean, yes, we know like there's you know the there's 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 a uh, there's people watching the balance sheet. I'm sure all the time, but uh, you know, to well well beyond you're that. not there's not like oh we we need to hold off and writing mortgages for a few months yeah. here yeah. It's, it's and like, that's what dictates our interest rates because if we're borrowing or taking a, a deposit from bank of canada at certain interest rate we have to you know lend out and when we're lending it out it, that's why uh that's what what dictates our interest rates. okay it's the yeah. spread yeah correct right um so uh what haven't we talked about that you would like to talk about i mean one one thing we talked about maybe talking about today is what RBC might be able to do that some other lenders on PI might not be able to do. Is there anything in that realm that you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could do, uh, so RBC on PI will loan for rented lots, for example, for trailers on site leases. Yeah. And yeah. Some, some, some won't. lenders won't, uh, the collateral is set up a little differently where, a traditional collateral mortgage would be on a per primary, you know, freehold and permanent foundation mm. um, where uh, on a mini home, we're taking like the make, model and serial number of the home. So mm. we treat it as a chattel mortgage, kind of like a vehicle loan. Would chattel. Be. Yeah. Chattel fixtures. Chattel yeah, fixtures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice tie. Yeah. Nice tie. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, some lenders just don't want to get into that. And if they do, sometimes it's personal lending rate. So, you know, eight, right. nine, 10%. percent um, uh, so we get into that, uh, like I kind of mentioned, the special loan programs for you know newcomers or you know uh, self-employed, where we're kind of looking more at the uh, you know business uh, revenue, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I, but I just yeah, I think the, yeah, like the biggest piece is yeah, we we we're, we do have a a large play or we're all kind of a bigger player in that in that you know in that space, the lease land, mm -hmm. um, but I mean I. I at the end of the, the one thing I, I would say is like is sometimes like we're it, there's going to be times where I'm like I really don't know where, where what program that fits in like we have so many different programs and so many different things that you know maybe it doesn't go residential maybe we'll get our small business partners involved mm -hmm. maybe we'll get our commercial partners involved mm -hmm. um, if if you're having um, if there's credit issues we have a different mortgage program that we can even get outside and it won't even go through, maybe through RBC. Like we'll we'll do our best to try to find the right hole mm -hmm. to where where you're gonna fit and like you know and that's kind of um, you know probably our biggest piece of our jobs is to figure okay where is this gonna land and does it stay with us because nine times out of ten it will. If but someone's if, declined somewhere else, should they still should they go absolutely. try? Absolutely, a hundred percent. I've have, got a couple uh, of good stories and those like you know. Um, yeah, we have an alternate mortgage solution, so it's an RBC representative who kind of shops around with kind of the second tier higher risk lenders okay, to kind of yeah. see if they would take on these clients. And that's kind of coming back to the, you know, if it's rural or if it's, you know, 5,000 or 3,000, you know, municipality, like, you yeah. know, some of those lenders might kind of. Yeah, I would, on. I know some other people would say, you know, if they were declined in one place, they're going to be declined everywhere. To me, if, if somebody called me and said they were declined, I'm like, let's go. I'll try it again. Yeah. You know, maybe because, you know, um, Oh, I'm not speaking for somebody else. Maybe maybe there's something they missed that they didn't go through properly, right? So I'm not going to assume that that other person, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, we'll still be able to pull it off and get it and get them. If someone it. applies in multiple places, does each sub, does it decrease yeah. their odds with each subsequent place because they're they're tapping on their credit rating? Yeah, more you got to be really stuff? careful with that. You don't want a lot of dings on, the, on your bureau. Um, You're safe to do three or four a year, but more than that, like car shopping, I see like eight hits in one weekend. Like that's not good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That does, does that hit your credit rating? It lowers. Yeah. I say every hit is like four to 
10 bips maybe after, oh, okay uh, and, if, and if you're if you're a person with your credit rating so like very very good it's going to probably affect you less where if you're if you're if you have your if you're at your limits and you're you know and then all of a sudden you're banging a lot of credit rank like you know it just seems to kind of be a it little might bit be more. it might be the thing that puts it over the line right. so best not to mess around what kind of credit like ratings do you loan for like if someone like is there a certain threshold that you will only go below yeah, so uh, default insurers, uh, well, they're six fifty, well, six hundred to six fifty. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is the credit score? Um, now, your credit score is kind of dictated not just by, based on your repayment patterns, but also your um, your your credit capacity. So, and say you have a ten thousand and yeah. your utilization. So, if you have like a ten thousand dollar limit credit card, but you're you know averaging you know one to two thousand dollar balance, uh, then that's kind of low capacity versus the credit limit. So that mm -hmm. score. Should, should be looking better right. where, you know, that same applicant has a max 10,000 credit card. Well, that shows that they're utilized hundred percent of their credit facility. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to well, lower their credit score. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. There's, and there's definitely ways to game that. Like, I think you can have, for example, uh, if you're careful, uh, mm -hmm. say multiple credit cards and kind of paying them all back, uh, regularly. And then if you miss one payment, it's a smaller percentage of the whole amount of payments that you missed. I've heard things like that where you can kind of game it a little bit. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, you know, you wouldn't want to miss a payment. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah we're, definitely. You know, it shows up one. for seven years, but we're kind of looking, what have you been up to the last two years? So ideally yeah. you'd want to see a squeaky clean two years. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and this is like something for, if someone's listening to this, like really cares about that, like don't find some way of not missing a payment. If Absolutely. You can at all. Yeah. It goes yes, back to my, please is, learn yeah. that, teach that in school. But I mean, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> that's, it's imperative, right? It just, the, the impact it has, especially, especially, especially whenever they're just starting the credit bureau. Yeah. Right. Now, I've been around way too long. So if I, if it happened to me once, it's not going to be a long time issue, but uh, I would hope <laughs> maybe make a payment next month. But, uh, you know, it's early. It's, it's so, uh, it's impactful. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, and then there's the other sites out there that can help, you know, they, like, uh, that's why, you know, the credit karmas and all that stuff of the world, like you can kind of help coach you through, or I don't even mm -hmm. know what all the different sites are, but yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. Uh, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Maybe you, you take turns saying what's the best way for people to get a hold of you if they want to uh, apply for a mortgage or just learn more. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the public RBC website. Uh, I have a bio page there. You just search, you know, look for mortgage specialists, put in your, you know, PEI address, and there'll be a few of us pop up there. Jason and I, uh, one of five, or two of five. Um, uh, or, yeah, call or email is probably the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah, my email is jason.ahern, A-H-E-R-N, at rbc.com, and uh, it's 902-439-1667. Um, and I'm answering all the, all the time, unfortunately for, for the, you know, I'm always working, but yeah, yeah. um, I'm your, uh, one fire. Your email yeah. Out. Uh, C I A R A N, uh, dot, uh, M U L C A H Y at RBC.com. And my number is 902-940-0356. Great. And I'll put that both of those in the show notes. So if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description or on Spotify or Apple uh, podcasts or whatever it'll be in the uh, in the show notes there. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. I mean, we hit on a whole variety of things here, so that was super fun. Yeah. Uh, any last things you either you want to say? Uh, I guess if you were going to take one thing away, it would be pay your bills on time, build up savings, and report your income on your on your taxes because uh, that was all three help uh, credit application for a mortgage. <laughs> yeah. No. Well said. And I'd just say, uh, Kieran and I. We've been, uh, you know, I guess together we probably have near 45 years, I guess, or 40 years of uh, experience. And, um, yeah, we, you know, we both do service the island tip to tip. So um, if there's any anything we can do to help out in the home finance space, uh, we'd love to work with somebody. So, um, and it, you know, and again, no, I, I wouldn't even want them to say, Jason, is there a specific niche? Just call for anything and we'll, we'll get you pointed in the right direction. Yeah. And it's great working with realtors like you, like, um, you know, cause you're representing the clients and we're also, you know, a lot of people look at the big bad bank, right. Uh, you know, we're also representing the clients, right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, we work a lot close together with the realtors. Uh, we have, you know, appraisers, uh, you know, text them, you know, to go check out properties for us and, mm. Um, so yeah, we, we're a close knit community in the, in the real yeah. estate. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much.
Great. Really appreciate you taking us uh, taking us on here. Oh, my yeah. pleasure. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Just Great. two little fellows here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks again. Awesome. Um, maybe one bonus question. Um, what is the difference uh, between um, TDS and a, a matter baby? Matter baby? What's a matter baby? 